what up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode, a special episode of the Nerd Gen Report. We are doing the recap of Fandom 2021. Um, I don't know if any of you tuned in or have watched it, but uh, I did a live for it was too long, so I would just I started to go live with when certain things hit, and I did a live on Friday, as you heard. I'm talking about some of the stuff that I was expecting to see, some of the rumors that were uh, people were talking about um, that, that they may announce on that day, um, and some of the stuff that I was looking to know more about. Brian, I will be honest, man. <clears throat> I don't care about any of it other than the Batman stuff. I care about the Young Justice. I like, I like, I like Young, Young Justice. I like that. I want to see the Injustice movie that's supposed to be coming out Tuesday. That's dope. Um, but uh, oh, Batman the animated series, obviously. Um, that's gonna be huge. I think uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that, but. Honestly, man, I, I would if I would have just seen the Batman trailer, uh, the, the second one, I would have been happy. I would have been happy. Let's run down some of the stuff that they were talking about, Brian. First of all, how are you doing? Tired. I'm good, but it's uh, I'm, I'm still coming off of I think you enjoyed No Time to Die. As well. Yes, and yes, yes. I, I, I really satisfying end to the Daniel Craig. Arc. I just wish they wouldn't have killed him. I wish they would have. I wish he would have had a happy end. I see. I don't think the. But I don't think the Craig Bond ever pointed to that. The whole he's constantly trying to get that escape, yeah. and I feel like he keeps coming back. Yeah. I feel like when you're the actor who said you're going to slit your wrists rather than come back, yeah. and then you come back, I almost feel like you have to do the Harrison Ford. You have to do the if you bring me yeah. back, I'm going out. I'm going. I'm, I'm going out. You know, saving the world. And so I thought I actually really, I actually really, um, I still think Skyfall is probably the best yes. film of the five. Yes. But I think this is if you want to slot this two or two A with uh, Casino Royale, I think. Yes. That's yes. that's fair, and then you yes. got two that are kind of meh. Yeah, but all in, I think a very, a very satisfying run of five films. From yes. Daniel Craig, so yes, that's off. And I ask you this one question before we we get to the fandom stuff. We need a break. Do you think we need a break of Bond for now? Five years. Five that's years. What right? I think. I think. I think that's if you look at, you know, um, the gap between. License to Kill and Golden Eye was six years. Okay. The gap between Die Another Day and Casino Royale was five years. Okay. I think, and if they're saying they're only gonna start hunting, and casting sometime next year, so then you say, okay, that's a casting sometime in twenty two. You start thinking about a director and a writer sometime in twenty twenty three. You shoot in 24, you release in 25. That's yeah. four or five years. So you're right on that. That that's what it feels like. And in the meantime, Lashana Lynch probably you're doing something with her, um, and that's kind of what tides you over. But I'm with you, like especially yeah. the way they did this, where it was serialized. Yeah. Like this movie to me, I was interested. Like I don't think you actually get this movie unless you saw Skyfall and Spectre. Yes. Like some of these characters, you're like, where did Blow up? Yeah. Where's Blow up on the movie? Yeah. Seconds, yeah. You, you yeah. know what I mean? So I think after that, you kind of got to do a full reset and think about what you want to tell. And I think they'll do that. Yeah. And Amazon will be in control of it the next time they do it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So and they can. Big subplot and, and most likely they'll build their universe from that. They have yes. to, I think. I think they have to. Um, let's get right to it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll leave, obviously, the Batman for last. I really want to get to that because that's um, where we're going to be spending a lot of our time talking about. Um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the topic of discussion for the rest of the week. Right. Um, but I mean, I mean, not us, but for other people, the people are going to be who go who are going to work and having conversations. They're going to be talking about this trailer. Well, let's start with, with um, some of the reveals that we were expecting to see. Um, Black Adam. Brian, I have to say, 
I was very disappointed. And and not because what I saw wasn't uh, bad. I mean, there was nothing new about it. We saw basically sort of an introduction to the to Black Adam. I don't know if that's going to even be a scene in the movie. Who knows? Maybe. But am I right, Brian, that this movie is uh, has wrapped filming or they still filming? Dwayne Johnson said post production was early stage when he okay. did his model. So they're, they're in post production. What? In terms of completion, in terms of what they shot, how much did the Batman last time when we saw the first trailer, how much did Matt Reeves shoot? How much of film? 25%. So 25% of actual filming, not yes. in post-production. Yes. They they clearly opted to edit and add effects yes. to the 90 seconds or whatever, two minutes that you yes. saw in the teaser, but they were still filming new scenes at the time you got. Why did they do that? Because they wanted to impress and they, they short enough did that. You going to tell me that you can't show us anything else other than what you showed us? I don't know if people are, are just afraid of The Rock <laughs> and they don't want to say anything and people are like, oh my God, this is, I can't wait. <sighs> This was so underwhelming, Brian. This is all you could show me? This is all you could put together? I don't understand it. I don't get it. And to me, honestly, yes, this is a Black Adam movie. You're going to show some Black Adam, but it's like, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's, it's that, that. I'm going to say, is that ego thing, man? Is, is, is it, it, That's the way it looks like to me. I don't know. What are your thoughts? I think this presentation under was the, this presentation underscored a general issue and a question I had about this whole event, which is when you consider that the pandemic stalled and delayed a lot of these projects, but at the same time gave the filmmakers more time Effectively. I was curious that we got so little in terms of polished footage. The predominant presentation was kind of like this first look or behind the scenes, like the style of presentation. Yeah. Really, only you know, the Batman gave you a true cinematic trailer. Yeah. And that to me, and in the case of something like Aquaman 2. Totally forgivable. They yes. just started shooting. Yes, yes. yes. I get that. And the character's already been established. You can yes. do that. Yes. But for some of these newer, or at least properties where you're kind of branching off into solo films, or in the case of Black Adam, you're really trying to introduce an entirely new set of characters. I was really just perplexed as to how little they actually had ready to go. And I, you know, you're you're kind of saying how much of that is rock. I, I don't know. And part of me in the back of my mind was wondering if the merger was an issue here. Like there's stuff that's almost getting stuck like along the way because they're still trying to sort out. Now these projects are all a go. They're a full go, but we'll get into the merger later on because there's some stuff that didn't get talked about that I think we actually want to talk about here. But I was kind of baffled. And I would say, I would suspect this is going to seem even more perplexing in a couple of weeks when we see the Disney Plus Day and D23. Yeah. Because I, I just have a feeling you're going to see a lot more stuff oh, yes. Yes. that's finished, edited with effects. Yes. Okay, so Black Adam specifically. Um, totally agree with you. This was my most biggest letdown of the... Yeah of the thing. And I, you know, I, I feel like you and I always wind up like we're, we're kind of, we like the rock. It's not really that we don't like the rock. We want this to work. Yeah. But it's like, and for a guy who is a master showman, he's got to know that these two years of what he's brought to fandom is not at the standard of what he needs to make this the billion dollar film that he's promising. 
to know that. He has to know that. To not see, I mean, to not really see a display of the superpower camera work that we were promised. And I, I was hoping to see that. And then to not even really see Black Adam, his characterization, like it basically is like he's he's like a monster basically for 30 seconds. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't, you have no sense of his character. And you see these quick flashes of the other folks in costume, but nothing really that like gives you a feel for the tone, for the theme. Yeah. I don't for the life of me understand it because this movie has to be further along than that. Like they had to have had enough time to edit at least 60 seconds of quality, polished work. I don't know. I don't have an explanation for you other than like this, they're creating the uphill battle. They are yeah. creating the uphill battle for this film. Brian, I'm going to speculate here and say that this movie will probably make a lot of money. I don't know if it gets to a billion dollars, but I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't even get close to that. I mean, you know what I think? I don't think it's going to get close. I don't think it's going to get close. This is a huge disappointment. I don't care what nobody says. This is nothing. This is, that's this right here. That, that is not that. No. This is what everybody's waiting for. The B Black Adam, I'm sure people want to see, but I'm not, like the way I was excited for the, the, the first trailer of the Batman, I don't have that same feeling for Black Adam. Black Adam so underwhelmed tremendously. And again, I'm sure that people, you know, people, you know, they like The Rock, they're, they're fans of The Rock, but... You, I, in my opinion, if I was a fan of, uh, of, of, if I was a bigger fan as some people are of him, I would, would have wanted more. So seeing him was just not enough. To me, it's a misunderstanding of the audience that already exists for the character. See, to me, you can do teasers for Batman Superman, Spider-Man, Wolverine. There are characters where there's a built-in knowledge. Like Man of Steel, the teaser, right? Yeah. Which we would say is, it's a fantastic teaser. Yeah, I don't care yeah. what you think about the movie. The trailer's dope. The trailer's dope, yeah. But if teaser. it wasn't Superman, it doesn't resonate. It yes. works because you don't need to tell anyone who Superman is. The minute yeah. you see the character flying up into the air, like at light speed, you're like, that's cool. Cause it's yeah. because it's Superman. Black Adam, you have to sell to us. I think there are comic fans who are ready for this and who want it, but to the mass audience, they don't know who Black Adam is. They don't yeah. understand Dr. Fate in this universe. So you have to overshare a little bit. I think at the outset, for people to say, well, that looks and feels really cool and I want to follow what's going on with that. Yeah. That's not happening with this movie. It, they're treating Black Adam like he already is Superman. The, yeah. Like the, in terms he, of his he, stature. Yeah, 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 exactly. And to me, again, it, it, just show, it just shows me that it's more about him than the character and in you know, and I mean, I may be wrong, but that's how I, that's just how I feel. Because I was expecting to see more by this time. I was expecting to see at least some footage of the actual movie of him talking or something more other than what we saw. The, the thing that I had in my head when I when we got to the end of this was I actually was thinking back to when I don't know if you remember when Favreau brought the Iron Man one teaser that kicked mm -hmm. off the MCU. Because mm -hmm. Iron Man at that time was sort of a nobody, right? That was a second, to outside yeah, of comics, yeah, yeah, comics yeah, fans yeah, knew. Yeah, but yeah. to the worldwide audience, they were like, but when he showed that like flying scene, the flying effects of the suit and he's using his weapon, he blows up the tank. Yeah. It was like people paid attention. It was like, okay, this is something I need to pay attention to. Yeah, this is different. I need to learn, right? And there, we haven't had that hook. Now, my only thing with The Rock is he is so busy 
and he just came off Jungle Cruise promotion. And I would assume in a movie like this, he's, to your point, he's almost like Tom Cruise in his control level. Like everything, like nothing gets done in a Tom Cruise production without Tom Cruise having final say. Yeah. I would guess that this is similar. Like okay. everything that, you know, from pre-production to post-production, The Rock's got to okay it. Yeah. Maybe they just ran out of time because he was so busy with other stuff that like they just didn't get to this in time. But like to me, that's on him to be like, look, if you want this to be your billion dollar vehicle, that needs to be your priority to a level where you can give the world even 60 good seconds of a hook yeah. for you in the costume doing something we've never seen before. And, and, and a glimpse of, of, of all these other characters. Right, you yeah. have a lot of characters there, and we seen we saw nothing of them, and and it's just very disappointing in my opinion. Very disappointing. I, like, really? there's there's nobody gonna tell me that this was a dope tour. That was it. It was the Rock. And, the, big, and, the biggest the biggest pitch you got was Pierce Brosnan saying, "I did four yeah. James Bond movies, and this is bigger than that." I'm like, yeah. well. I respect your James Bond, but like that was also like 25 years ago. <laughs> like, that's not the standard for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. movie making anymore. Yeah, let us know when you in the comment section what you guys thought of the Black Panther uh tr trailer. Like Adam. Um, <laughs> yeah, my bad. Black Panther, Black, Adam. <laughs> Black Adam. I'm gonna have to cut that out. Um, let us know <laughs> in the comment section what you guys think about the Black Adam uh, teaser scene because it wasn't even a trailer. It was more rock talking and some um, mo uh, mo motion graphic type stuff that we saw previously and we got yep. a little bit more of that again. I some believe they rehashed that shot. Of him, like in the in the digitized comic version, of him. I, I couldn't I don't believe get that it. showed up I, again. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, why are you showing me this again? I already saw it. I don't get it. Let, let me know in the comment section below, man. Because say what you want. This was so underwhelming. It's just it's just disappointing. I'm sorry. Um, Aquaman two. You want to talk about Aquaman two real quick? Yeah, let's talk about Aquaman. All right. Two. So, like you said, Aquaman 2 just started. We didn't get a lot of footage. Um, I don't know about you, but it almost felt to me like Jason Momoa didn't want to be there <laughs> when he was being when he was talking and and in the beginning of of Fandom, they were asking questions and they were going through the line. And he was one of the people that, that was answering some of the questions, I guess, that fans, I guess, were asking. He just didn't seem like he wanted to be there. But it's like you said before in a previous uh, 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 show, we def we're definitely going to see more Black Black Manta. Yep. Um, and we also discussed what this show might be uh, because of his connection to, you know, um, cleaning up the earth and, and, and things of that and environmental uh, uh, topics. He mm -hmm. he's he's going to address that in this movie. And I'm pretty sure he had a lot to say about what this movie needed to be. Um, what I mean, this <clears throat> for me, there's nothing really to be excited about other than, you know, I'm going to see if they give us a trailer and when they give us a trailer probably next year. When does that movie come out? Anyway, do you know? Uh, it's the fourth quarter of next year. I think it's like the winter. Remember, Rockman okay. One was like a Christmas movie. This will be, Got it. this will be, as I said, this will be in close proximity to Avatar Two. So it's going to be a little bit different from a competitive standpoint than it was the last go around. Okay, so you, you know, um, we're definitely going to get at, at least by the summertime a, a trailer. No doubt. So, um, what did you think, Brian? Yeah, like I said, this movie is in a completely different place than Black Adam. Uh, yeah. you, when you when you when you make a billion dollars, a lot of what you want to do when you just started filming is just show everyone having fun and getting band get back together. And that's exactly what this was designed to do. Um, good news for Patrick Wilson, I guess they let him get a haircut at some <laughs> point in this movie because <laughs> they showed him at least not looking like a hobo anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, which was nice. <laughs> and otherwise, you just got quick cuts of. Um, I, I did notice that they were careful really to only show you the characters you knew already. Yeah. That was the one thing that stood out to me. They really didn't want you to see 
anything in the new casting or new, or new difference, right? So they kind of gave you the, um, okay, Black Manta's gonna have his role beefed up. That should happen, that makes sense. But other than that, you kind of just saw the good guys like Aquaman or Arthur fighting sort of yeah. out of the suit. Yeah. Um, they didn't really show, they were careful not to show him fighting in the suit, even in sort of the real set um, pieces. Yeah. Uh, my one sort of humorous thing was like, it, it, it kind of looked like Momoa could have just rolled off the street and shot his scenes. Like he basically yeah. was wearing the clothes he wears normally. Uh, normally, like, right? Yeah, yeah. He always, like, I was like, I'm did he you. actually change? Did he have makeup on or is he just like, hey, we'll bring everyone to you and you can kind of mess around with them for a little bit. I'm telling you, man, he's calling the shots on the set. <laughs> he's he's calling it how the, this movie's going to get done. Hopefully, I mean, I, I'm curious to see if this movie makes as much as it did the first time around. Yeah, like I said, I mean, they're promising more. You know, they're pro as I said, to me, this is going to be the, the venom of the DC universe and that they're going to basically lean into the things that made the first movie work and kind of turn the ridiculous up. That's my sense. I felt like the yeah. James Wan comments in this little featurette seem to also lean in that direction. But I think with this film, like to your point, until we see, until we see a trailer that actually gives us a sense of like, how far are we going in that direction? How far in the comic are we leading? How far in the crazy color set are we leaning or are we trying to do something anything different i think until we get that feel you know this movie is about as safe a bet as dc has right now yeah. so you know there's really not much to be gleaned and i don't think they wanted to give you like anything more than just sort of like a i don't know like a nice little like you know kind of like a safe warm blanket from the mm, first yeah. time if you liked it so yeah yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the presentation for aquaman 2 um again this real really early to really be excited about it. Um, you guys know my feelings towards Aquaman, the first film. I thought, you know, it was, it was, I think cinematography was beautiful, but um, I, I really didn't care too much for the story and for the the humor. The action sequences were pretty dope, but um, except for the one where his mom is fighting the, the soldiers. But um, let's see. Let's see if they can improve upon the story. I doubt, I, I, I really doubt this movie is going to be even better than the first one. But it's still early to tell. Let's see what happens. Shazam. Did they, sh I mean, this is another film that they've been shooting, right? They've been shooting. I do not believe they are done. Yeah, I don't believe they're in post yet. But they yeah, have I, I haven't heard that yet. yet. Yeah. yeah, but this is another film where I'm pretty sure they shot at least halfway. Yeah, of this film. Did they show a teaser trailer? I don't know. They, they showed like a behind the scenes look. There was no finished footage. It was all sort of, a, yeah. you know, on the set with. Yeah, your yeah exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's what I thought I saw. I may have missed it because the thing about comic-con and this is like you got to watch what they're showing and and you know and you, you if you not liking what you seeing you just got to watch it and just wait or walk away and i was finding myself walking away from this event quite often because i wasn't interested um so i thought i had missed that but this is another thing is like show us this is movie supposed to come out next year correct yep show us something yo show us something Give 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 us something to be excited about, man. I don't get it. I don't you you've been filming. You didn't take the time to show up for this event where people all over the world who have internet access are gonna watch that and, and you only got behind the scenes to show me. Brian is 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 is, is unacceptable. As a fan, it's unacceptable knowing that the movie is coming out next year. We got a trailer for the Batman last year. It wasn't coming out this year, obviously because of the pandemic, but they had shot 25% of it and they showed us something. What did you think about Shazam? Yeah, generally on the same page. This is an odd one just because this movie was well liked by the critics. It's sort of like a fun, harmless watch, but then just got instantly forgotten in sort yeah. of the, the comic book, you know, genre. I'm weirdly more interested in the sequel. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's because in the first one, 
there was something repetitive about Mark Strong's villain. Like I felt like I'd almost seen it with Sinestro or I had seen him do a version of this character in non-superhero form before. And yeah. I kind of was a little bit bored yeah. with it. Whereas almost that Sherlock Holmes type. That, 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 yeah, that's, exactly. Yeah. I was like, I've seen this villain. He just has blue eyes now. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of bored me a little bit. Yeah. So there's something about seeing Lucy Liu, you know, pulling out the Kill Bill playbook and the Charlie's Angels playbook and then seeing Helen Mirren in sort of a ridiculous Greek goddess costume that in a weird way makes me more interested. Like when they showed, like, I think it's their version of Mount Olympus. They kind of showed a couple of sets from Greek mythology they're going to use in this movie. Mm -hmm. You know, in a weird way, I was like, okay, at least we're going to someplace different other than the streets where Billy Batson lives. Yeah. And I'm like, that's probably a good decision for this movie. I don't know if this movie can survive just kind of being in the same small contained universe that it was in. So consider me like intrigued, but with you disappointed that we didn't get like a full feel. Like they kind of showed those sets, but they didn't really show you like, what is, what is a scene yeah, there yeah. look like what does action look like with lucy Liu and and helen mirren but yeah like i said weirdly i actually think this movie is going to be i have a feeling it's going to be decent just because i felt like they had a pretty good handle on the character in the first one it just wasn't like it just didn't have that hook to get 600 700 million dollars you know a, a box yeah, but i have yeah. a feeling this is actually going to be decent i have a feeling when we do get like trailers and footage like it'll it'll rate pretty well. And, and I might at least want to see it once. And then, like I said, it probably won't be, it won't be in the rewatchable library, no. but it'll be in the like, oh, I enjoyed that. It was a nice two hours. I'm not excited for this movie at all. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but, you know, I'm gonna watch it, obviously, just you know, because we got, I, you know, we talk about this stuff. So I want to watch it. I offer my opinion on the movie. But let us know in the comment section what you guys thought of the presentation for Shazam. Now, the Flash, Flashpoint. To me, I mean, it just reminded me of how much I don't like Ezra Miller as the Flash. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want to see Keen back in the, the Cape and Cow and see his performance. I'm more interested in knowing for sure if this will reset the DCEU. That's what I want to know the most. Regarding the story, the, it's, obviously it seems like they're getting, you know, back to, uh, to what the comics did and him going back and saving his moms and stuff like that. Cool. But seeing another Barry Allen in the in the film, there was two Ezra Miller, so it's gonna be twice as awkward. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I, it looks better in terms of the flash suit. Do you yes, like yes, his suit? Yes, he looks yeah, better, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I like I like I like the suit. Yes. But um, again, I'm not too um, excited for Ezra Miller's uh, portrayal as Barry Allen in The Flash. I'm looking forward to seeing Keaton. I uh, wasn't impressed by what I saw. I mean, did we see any Flash running? We didn't see any of that, right? No, I think that was very deliberate. I mean, yeah, they, they were careful but it's not like, to show you any speed for I mean, they, so this it, movie went to shoot in the spring. Okay. They clearly gave you at least a few effects with the suit itself in normal time, but saved definitely. Yeah, again, it's one of those where it's like you would have thought maybe you got one shot of him in action and mm -hmm. you didn't really get that. Also notice that they showed you Sasha Kaye's head, but not her yeah. costume in full or, or Supergirl doing Supergirl stuff. Yeah. I, I Again, I hope she is the the replacement for the original storyline of a, super, a Superman being detained and, and uh, it, I guess they freed her. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that scene was, cause I think they asked him, are you in, right? Harry Allen asked, they're asking Batman, are you in? And uh, we're, we're, I guess the, the teaser leads us to believe they're asking Michael Keaton's Batman. Okay. 
And by the way, that's the best part of this footage. Yeah. It's Michael Keaton turns the Batman voice yeah. back on from 1989. Yeah. And it's like, he hasn't missed a day. Yeah. And considering that's like 30 years old for his voice yeah. to sound exactly the same. It's exactly. Good, that's the best part of this. Yeah. I will say, really, I thought, ambiguous moment when they show the back of Batman's cow walking toward the Flash characters. They play what sounds like the music from the Nolan Batman. If you listen to it, it's the kind of like drum beat that started the original Batman Begins, mm -hmm. which really threw me for a loop because obviously we know the Affleck Batman's in this and we know the Keaton Batman's in this yeah. and they stuck the audio, what it sounded like from Tom Zimmer's Batman Begins Dark Knight score in here. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what, what is going like?" That was the only thing, but I assume it is. And then they showed, you saw the shot of it's Keaton's Batman cow that's covered with blood that's laying on the floor in one of those mm -hmm. shots. So then, mm -hmm. and they were careful not to show Affleck at all. Yeah. So I don't know. This was, you know, I'm with you. Like, I'm, I'm skeptical because I don't love the Ezra Miller portrayal. I think it's too over the top. Yeah. Um, but I will say hearing Michael Keaton's voice was... I don't know. That, that yeah, was, yeah, that'll yeah. get that'll get you a far, a pretty far away with me if he is a, a major force. In yeah, this yeah. Um, yeah, you know. But uh, again, this is one of those things that you, you know, he he's a speedster. Let me see some of that. Let me see if the, if let me see some of that. You know, because that's his power. I mean, we 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 get to see the power of Black Adam. They shot stuff and they shot stuff for the Flash. Why can't you, you know? It's, Give me something more to be excited, not just the Batman head coming up. And is it about Batman? What's what's is this a Flash movie or a Batman movie? You know, is so it's just give me a little bit more, just a little bit more. I think, I think along those lines, if this movie is the fulcrum by which the whole universe is being reset, it wasn't really pitched like that. This event. Yeah. You wouldn't have known that at all based on how this was presented. And yeah. your Batman point is well taken. We'll talk about it throughout some of the other presentations here, but they are arguably more reliant on Batman than they ever have been. Right? If you go through the lineup of the number of times Batman is mentioned, pictured, inferred outside of just the Batman, he is the glue. He almost is almost everything that got presented. Yes. Yes. Batman is, it, it always comes down to that guy, it seems. It's like he is the guy. And these other guys, you can't seem to get straight. Or oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Superman is now is like, people don't know what to do with it. And it's, it's, just, it's just incredible to me. Very interesting. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the Flashpoint um, presentation. Uh, I wasn't impressed, um, but I am, you know, happy to see Michael Keaton return as a Batman again. And I want to see if this actually resets the DCEU and they go in another direction. Um, let's quickly talk about um, Peacemaker. To me, Brian, to me, this is going to be how many ever, how many episodes there are of it. It's going to be the same thing over and over again. The comedy, the jokes, all that, all that stuff is going to just keep going and going and going. And it's just going to be that sort of, that kind of dialogue. I could be wrong, but that's what it, that's what I saw. I'm gonna watch it. Just, you know, just to watch it, but I'm not excited too much for it. I was excited at first at the announcement of it, but having seen what James Gunn would do with Suicide Squad and, and now seeing this is like, it just confirms my concerns about this just being more of James Gunn and 
his sort of humor and, 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 and his style of filmmaking that I necessarily don't care for too much. Your thoughts? Uh, James Gunn, are we sure he's really good? Am I, am I allowed to ask that question? Like, I, so, hey, I, hey, Brian, I'm with you. Uh, let me say this. Guardian of the first Guardians of the Galaxy was dope. That second one, I wasn't feeling too much. Right? Then he did Suicide. What did he do after Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Uh, get fired. He, okay, get, get fired. He, can't, he got canceled. Okay. <laughs> and now he's doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which, you know, that's down the road. And, and he did Suicide. And, uh, suicide Squad was his comeback. Right? Yeah. Basically. Okay. Yeah. And we already have spoken about it. You want to go check out that that that, that episode where we talk, uh, uh, we give our review of the Suicide Squad. Um, those same concerns from that are still in this, and I don't know how much of it I am going to enjoy. So you know, I say that kind of cheekily. Uh, obviously, James Gunn has talent. That's not what I'm what I'm saying here. What I'm asking yeah. is. Is his range narrower, narrower than perhaps we thought? So when Guardians One hit, part of its appeal was this breath of fresh air relative to the first phase of the MCU and the way those characters have been positioned. Right, the silliness of it, the soundtrack, the colors—it felt new. And you know we're kind of five or six reps deep now. And it, the newness is kind of worn off. And I don't feel like we've gone in a lot of different directions. I still feel like James Gunn has almost created his own formula in the way that Marvel gets criticized for the Marvel formula. Thank I feel you. like James Gunn has boxed himself into a formula. Thank it's you. like he's giving you the songs because we expect a, a soundtrack. He's giving you a certain brand of humor because that's what people expect. He's giving you wacky action because... And he's almost like a prisoner of his own early success, as opposed to, you know, if I if I make the analogy to like a Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino has a mode of filmmaking, right? That's a similar idea. Yeah, you know, yeah. Music, action. There's yeah. definitely Tarantino staples. And dialogue. But, Tarant but Tarantino wrote into different genres. He wrote into different arenas and tested his limits to where each film felt at least somewhat distinct, right? It yes. had the common themes, but it felt like you were exploring new territory. Yes. James Gunn feels more limited to me. Like the only real difference between Suicide Squad and Guardians is the R-rated violence. It yes. really is kind of the same movie, just, you know, with different names and kind of, yeah, we, we can show more blood. Mm. And then when I saw the Peacemaker trailer, I said, okay, so he's coming to TV with, basically the same <laughs> toolkit he's not yeah. using serialized televised storytelling as a way to do something different than what he would do yeah on the big screen so i'm with you i will watch it cena is charismatic but i don't think this will be in the pantheon of a very competitive superhero tv landscape when it comes out yeah yeah um let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the peacemaker presentation um i'll watch it but i'm not in, i wasn't impressed by what i saw and it seems like we're just gonna get more of the same sort of hype content it makes me less excited for his other dc project too because it makes me feel like we're gonna get another Apple that doesn't fall far from the James Gunn tree, whatever yeah. he's doing. I'm looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. The reason being is that because there's more of a Marvel oversight there. Right? So I'm not as concerned. I think the first Guardians of the Galaxy, um, they sort of let him to his devices and they got what they got because they thought, oh, the first Guardian, look out you know, Rocket Raccoon, everybody's talking. So they were high off of them, let him do what he wants, and they let him do what he wants. The second one didn't get that much fanfare. 
Um, so this one, I think they're going to be making sure that things are the way they should be for, you know, for who that agrees, film. you know, who agrees with us publicly? Who? Dave Batista. Oh yeah. What do you say? Yeah, re- oh, re-, re Google his comments about the direction Drax's character was taken over the course of the MCU. He not yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I recall he, him. He, saying, yeah, he resents that they turned him into kind of like comic relief in yeah, a joke. Yeah. yeah, he was. Brian, he was. He was. He's useless. <laughs> But that's a little bit of James Gunn taking the James Gunnness of that character and cranking the volume. And then yeah. that became something they carried into the Avengers movies too. Yeah. They showed a lot of promise in his first introduction, but they sort of just went away from that and they just made him into a, a useless uh, comedic relief character that wore out his welcome, I think. And Dave Batista was probably as vocal as anyone about getting James Gunn back to direct ah, yeah. Guardians 3, but at, at the same time said he was not thrilled with how his character ended up. Yeah. Um, we'll briefly, um, and I, we're not going to get too deep. I'll just say that, you know, I want to see Young Justice. I don't know if you've seen the Young Justice uh, cartoons, um, Brian. I'm not caught up on those, no. Oh, okay. They're, they're, they're pretty good. I would say they're pretty good. Um, Injustice movie coming out Tuesday. I'm definitely checking that out. Okay. I've heard some good things about it. Um, and one thing that people are not talking about, and I thought that was very, um, very, I'm very curious to see how they developed this. And that is, excuse me, that is uh, Static Shock and the Milestone characters. Mm-hmm. There was a present, presentation there that they're really trying to develop uh I would, I would say a universe, certainly in the comics, but they're certainly also going to test um, um, with Static Shock. I, I believe it's a film, correct, on HBO Max or, uh, or a yes. series? It's a, it's a film. It's a film. Okay. And Michael B. Jordan is, produced, is one of the producers on that. And they're also, I, I think, Brian, what they, they, they want to do, because we got the Black Panther, they, there's an audience there, right? Um, and we don't know where the future of Black Panther lies. Obviously, they're gonna, you know, do something with it. But we don't longer have uh, a king anymore. It's uh, we don't know what it will be. Well, we're definitely curious. The curiosity for Black Panther two and excitement is there because we want to know what's next for that character. Even though you know we don't entirely know what this movie is going to be about. Um. But there's room for more. And we're going to be getting Static Shock, which, you know, alongside with uh, Miles Morales, um, Miss Marvel, the young, um, uh, the younger generation are, are going to identify with that character. And I'm hoping that they can develop a, a icon story, a, a movie, a show, whatever. And, and there are others that they, 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 they're wanting to do. So I'm very excited about what they're doing. I'm curious to see what they do develop. I want to see what this um, um, Static Shock is going to be. Um, and I'm hoping one day we get some more info uh, uh, on the Superman, which we we didn't, I, I, I don't recall because remember, I walked away because some of the stuff, I mean, Supergirl is ending great. Um, the Flash needs to end as well. But I want to see what um, um, Michael B. Jordan is going to do with Superman, uh, Valzad. But what were your thoughts on that presentation for Milestone? Yeah, no, it, I thought a thoughtful panel. Um, Michael B. Jordan kind of staying, I think, he didn't want to upstage that. So he kind yes. of left it to the, the writers and, and sort of the creators to kind of talk about, you know, what they were doing there. And I, th- I think, you know, I, it all sounds great. It all sounds yeah. like they're kind of being careful with their world building to your point. I think they're also, you know, they're, they're trying to address kind of representation in a more organic way. Like it's kind of like, as yes. opposed to, you know, some of the characters when we were seeing things being forced a little bit, they're trying yes. to be like, look, we, we want to, 
and we, we, you know, we can put even, you know, Blue Beetle had its own panel, but same idea. Like yes. we're trying to be true, younger generation, up and coming actors, you know, something that kind of teens and 20 somethings latch onto and then follow hopefully over a five to 10 year period. And then, yeah, if things hit, you can kind of mix and match team ups and create your own young justice or whatever you want down the road on the big screen. Yeah. Yeah. I think that seems to be what they're the playground they're trying to create. And so, you know, I think we're, we're all for that. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think static shock, you know, static shock has the one advantage of it was done in animated form, right? That's the one of these characters. We have seen it before. It was a pretty good show 20 years ago. Nobody remembers, but um, you know, so at least has a little bit of a uh, history there, but yeah, no, yeah. I, I was, I was not um I was not disappointed and I was like this is not something that was you know they haven't set this movie up yet so yeah, it's yeah. nothing to show right it's yeah, just yeah. talking about concept so yeah yeah it was fun it was fun to just sort of hear a little bit of the the big picture plans for writing and then yeah scripting De developing that yeah yes definitely yeah. um let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of the milestone presentation of static shock are you looking forward to seeing that um blue beetle was also announced um mm -hmm. the, the the they cast the individual i forget his name is you know, i'm gonna butcher his name <laughs> jolo maraduena i think his name is okay that dude he um he's in karate kid uh on show on netflix um perfect casting um it seems like the people involved in creating that movie are definitely going to put their heart and soul into this. And I think this might be a sleeper. This might, this, this movie, Blue Beetle could be one of those movies that has, when people talk about heart, this movie to this movie, to me, Blue Beetle will have a bunch of that, I think. And I think it's going to be one of those films. That's going to be, a, 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 a it's going to go not under the radar, but it's going to get a lot of buzz when it does come out and who knows where it can go from there. What, what did you think? Well, I thought the concept of art of the suit looked promising. Yeah. I mean, that's one that can go real bad. And I think they, they, they the look looks good. Uh, he was hyping yeah. it. He was like, I haven't even seen the suit. And he's like, I got the best suit. You know, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I love him. I'm such a, I mean, I'm a big fan. Just having, I'm love Cobra Kai and yes. watching him grow up on that show. I think he's, he's the reason i would say this thing can be a sleeper hit because i yeah. think he's got both the athleticism and the charisma to really steal the screen and i'm excited to see what he can do as the lead of this show but yeah yeah you know i think you bring up a good point whether it's him you know whether it's um iman balani who's miss marvel like a subset of those type of actors and actresses will do what tom holland did Yes. five years ago that is going to happen we don't know exactly if all of them are going to make it but a few of them are going to become mega stars yeah doing these roles and it yeah. isn't necessarily going to be that you played the biggest character to start yeah yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the blue beetle presentation um again i think this is going to be uh, uh, uh something to look out for when we do get to see something I think it's something that um, people are not yet uh, excited about as much, but um, when they do show something and when we first get, when we first get our first look of it, I think people will start talking about it a lot more. Um, the best for last. Well, actually, I Wait, wanted to can we talk about, yes, can we talk yes, about yes, yes, that's, that's, that's about exactly, Superman. that's exactly what I was going to get to. In the show that I did prior to Fandom, I had said some of the things I would like to know more about was Superman, J.J. Abrams, Superman, uh, Michael B. Jordan's Valzad, Superman, the possible rumor that Henry Cavill was going to be in uh, uh, Do a Man of Steel 2. There's still rumor of him possibly being in Black Adam. We don't know yet, but there was... To be the guy to start everything and no mention of it is weird to me. Why that is, why is that, Brian? Yeah, it was almost made more conspicuous by the fact that they did the 20th reunion for Smallville and you see kind of Tom Welling and Michael. Ah, yes, I did see that. Yes. And then you had Superman and Lois, obviously, they were promoting their new season. 
So it almost like drew attention to his absence from this event. Yeah. You know, my best theory is this is where I'm wondering if the merger is involved because you've got what seem to be almost competing projects that are being set up with the ta coach, J.J. Abrams version and the Valzad version. Yeah. And then, you know, the remnants, if Cavill is still at the table in some form or fashion, I wonder if the, that the higher ups just made a call to say, like, we're just going to remove Superman from the dialogue of this event because we just don't know what what's greenlit and what's actually happening and um you know obviously you know <laughs> we don't have to talk about this but superman was in the news quite a bit this past week for different reasons or at least his son was for different yeah. reasons yeah yeah and that drew a lot of response but i think yeah i think it's one of those where it just underscores how lost this character is right now it's a on shame. the big screen and and sort of now in sort of prestige tv and I think they're, they are gun shy about sharing anything when they don't necessarily seem to know like what they want to do with Superman yet. But it really stood out. Like I talked about how Batman was mentioned, his fingerprints were on almost everything in this, in this whole event. Yes. Superman was the polar opposite of that. He was yeah. invisible for 98% yes. of this event. Yeah. We even got an announcement that, you know, they're doing Wonder Woman 3, right? Patty Jenkins was talking about Wonder Woman 3. Um, but, yeah, there was no, it was weird, yo. It felt like, damn, DC and no Superman, no talk of any future projects. Nothing. And hopefully, man, when the new regime comes in, they'll make it a, a, a Hopefully they stop J.J. Abrams and Tanahashi Coast from doing what they think they want to do with the character. I hope they they stop that. I'm on. I'm. I'm. You. You, you laughing? But I'm. I'm I, I hope they do because I, for me at this point they're just doing stuff just to make Superman interesting again. And well, I me, think like, I do think I do think that John like what's I do think look that the new regime is going to be starting to read the landscape and trying to get clues from things like the Jonathan Kent fallout, right? Like the, like what happened this past, like stuff like that. If you don't think stuff like that has impact on other things that are in the pipeline, I think you're wrong. I mean, they, they are clearly going to be looking at things like that to figure out what direction can we, what direction should we take this character? Um, or should we table it entirely until people have kind of let the, I don't know what you want to call the aftermath of the Snyderverse, you know, fight with Warner Brothers kind of just play out, die out, and then we kind of just hit the reset button. I, I mean, I think it's all in play, yeah. but I don't think it's an accident that no JJ, no ta no Michael B. Jordan, nobody to talk about anything that's in the yeah. pipeline and yeah. not an accident. Somebody higher up was like, there's a there's a gag order on Superman. For this. Yeah. 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 Let us know in the comment section below uh, what you think about that uh, absence of the greatest superhero of all time, right? Superman. Nothing. There was no mention of him uh, other than, you know, the Smallville. Yeah, cool. But no Actually, future. He got one tangential reference in what i would argue is the second most guaranteed hit they presented which is super pets <laughs> that yeah, movie that, that is, is going to make mint money and yeah. they are going to make five of those <laughs> i'm telling you the teaser so there they had a teaser yes and it was pretty funny yes, yes. and it was the animation looks like um secret life of pets but you got Dwayne Johnson as Crypto, Kevin Hart yeah. as his foil, great voice cast. Yeah. He's going to make, he's going to make, every kid is going to want to see. Yeah. That it's going to make mad money. It's going to make mad money. Uh, for sure. For sure. Um, let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of Super Pets. It's going to make more money than Black Adam. I would agree with you. I'm I'm with you. I think that is true. Yeah, it, it's definitely a, a, a possibility for that happening. Um, 